back, ladies and gentlemen, to Nanomix Corp's channel, mobile diagnostics without compromise. Of forefronting the industry, we have the pleasure of David, the Chief Executive Officer, joining us today. Welcome, sir. Hi, happy to be here. Always a pleasure to get you on here, man. We're going to be really divulging down into what Nanomix is doing, but I want to roll back a little bit, kind of get an introductory video here. So you're kind of informing critical diagnostics at the earliest point of patient interaction. For newer investors, can you kind of just give us a brief elevator pitch to what's going on there at Nanomix? Right. Well, Nanomics has developed a uh, mobile diagnostic system. It's very unique, proprietary. It's based on all of our technology that we've developed internally. So Nanomics owns everything, has the rights to everything, and it's all our technology. Importantly, what this is all about is very rapid uh, provision of information to healthcare providers uh, at the first point of contact between a patient and the healthcare system. So what we're really focusing on is improving patient outcomes, improving the experience, improving their outcomes, you know, by providing information as quickly as possible to the treating physician. And we're focused initially on some very critical infection areas, such as sepsis and hospitalizable pneumonia, bacteremia, a number of things like that that require very rapid decision making on the part of a physician or a clinician and in, in, in making a decision about what do I do with this patient. So we're shortening that time frame to critical information and hopefully then shortening the time frame to making the right decision and improving the outcome for the patient. Now, this is a very new and evolving industry. It's very fascinating. I got to ask you, I mean, you've got over 35 years of international experience in life science and technology. I mean, give us a little bit of uh, anecdotes on your history leading up to that aha moment that became uh, Nanomix. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's, it's a, uh, I, I think in my career that I have been what I call, you know, a, a, a missionary um, a, a technologist, right? And so, um, I'm always working on things that are ahead of time. And actually, this whole point of care idea, I really got fired up about it around 2005 or so. Um, and I was part of a company. We acquired a company that was a point of care diagnostics company at that point in time. And what I saw was a, a really important product and a really important impact on, on, on patients from point of care diagnostics. What I also saw was the diagnostic test results were considered as sort of second rate. The technology was not quite up to snuff and the systems were generally difficult to use. And in spite of those limitations, we were still able to provide products uh, to, to patients to, to help uh, their outcomes, right? So I've always had in my mind the idea about accessibility you should be able to get diagnostic information at the first time that you enter into a, into a, into a healthcare system, no matter where that is, whether it's a, a paramedic, you know, at the, at the house in an emergency call, whether it's somebody who's in a um, assisted living facility, for instance, you go to an urgent care clinic and you need to be evaluated and decisions need to be made, you know, where you go, what do you do? Do I need to treat you now? Do I need to send you home? emergency departments. So I've always seen that there's a very powerful use of very rapid technology that can span anywhere. We think about it anywhere from the emergency department out to, the, uh, to wherever the individual is, right? Uh, and, 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 and so I've always seen that we could make the patient experience and the patient outcome much better if we conquered those couple of, of expectations or, or limitations, let's say, that, that are in, you know, in people's minds. And that is, how do, I make a, how do I make this technology so that it has the quality of a laboratory system, okay? And how do I make it really, really easy to use? So when I got to Nanomics and I saw the technology, I saw a technology here that would allow me to do that with the product but also very importantly with the technology that was there, able to make it into something that could be used anywhere. And, and so that was very compelling to me. So now the idea, not only of improving performance and improving usability, but also the idea of portability, mobility, and being able to go out into the field 
with these kinds of things. So it was very, very important. I, 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 I joined Nanomics as a consultant and I helped put together sort of the technology plan and the strategic plan. And one of the very first things that I did was I, I brought in a development partnership, a little, a little prototyping uh, project that we did with Tulane University um, around um, the Ebola crisis. And so we worked with Tulane, put together a, uh, a multiplex test for Ebola loss of fever and dengue. Uh, and we actually rolled that out then to Tulane and their group on the ground in Sierra Leone and they tested it and it worked. And that was like, okay, we have something here that works. Now, how do we take and go put it into a, to, into a product that we can manufacture, get regulatory approval for and launch into the market and find the right indications for that. So that that began the march from sort of concept to the product that we then then developed and, and, and have ready now and are, are beginning to market this in, in uh, uh, primarily in, in the EU. This is really incredible. I love the healthcare space. I always feel like it's very mission driven and I'm getting the sense that this has been in your blood for quite some time, no pun intended on that aspect, but uh, just a brief insight out to your team as well. Who's helping you captain this ship? Well, we have a great team. Um, there are, are uh, two people on the technology development front, Brad Johnson and, and Cheryl Lavanino, um, who've been there since I've been there. And they're really the backbone of the development of the, uh, of the technology. Um, we recently brought in uh, a gentleman by the name of Vidur Sani, who is our COO now, and he has great experience in the life sciences uh, world, but he also has experience in scaling manufacturing activities from small volumes to very large volumes. So he was one of the primary people who built out the Jewel, the smokeless tobacco company manufacturing infrastructure. Uh, so I brought him back to the right side of, of life sciences now, and we've got him employed to build the capability that we need in order to build this product in you know, in thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of, of devices. We also hired a year ago, uh, a little more than a year ago now, a gentleman by the name of John Hardesky. John has more than 20 years of experience in this, um, in this market in life sciences. He's been, he's been a COO of an equipment company. He has held major uh, positions with very large uh, dis distributors, including McKesson, and uh, he's off and running now with a small team, starting to build the relationships with customers and distributors. So we're, we're a small company, 30 people, but uh, right now with, with plans to grow, but uh, um, I would say all of these individuals are, are really you know, serious scientists, serious business people. And we have a crew underneath them that are very dedicated to, to what we're doing. So. It's a fantastic team. Well, on that note, I find this very fascinating. When we come back around, we're going to kind of deep dive down further into your business, but I want to pass the question off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you guys think about all this in that comment section below. Consider subscribing because as news down, uh, comes down the wire, we're going to continue to update you here. But on that note, stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.